Again, this week, our screens have been full of the horrific images of people fleeing, fleeing from trouble. In Humphreys County and Waverly, our neighbors, including the family members of at least one of our own members, suffered heartbreaking loss as they experienced firsthand what we heard the psalmist this morning call the waters roaring and foaming and swelling and overflowing their banks. In the midst of that chaos and in the aftermath, many cried out for help to the one whom the psalmist calls our refuge, our strength, a very present help in times of trouble. In Afghanistan, a half world away, we continued to see people fleeing to safety, leaving their homes amidst political upheaval and violence and what the psalmist calls the raging of the nations and the tottering of kingdoms. And we expect to see more such images this week as a hurricane once again approaches the Gulf Coast. So far in our series, we have heard the invitation of Jesus to come and see, to experience for ourselves, not just to observe, but to come and walk alongside Him and to see what it is that God is doing in the world. And we've heard the invitation to come and rest to take the yoke that Jesus himself is wearing and to be yoked with him, to learn from him how to live in this world. Come and see, come and rest. And then last week we talked about how we come and follow. We learn from Jesus as students learn from their teacher. Today the invitation is different it's a different kind of invitation. We can imagine it being shouted over the din of chaos and the roaring collapse of every foundation that we hold dear, every one of life's foundations. The invitation you can think of as a voice shouted over that chaos or a still, small voice that somehow cuts through, through the sound of battle through the roar of jet engines, through the roaring of wind and rain and storm surge. It's the invitation to flee to the One who is unmovable, unshakable, unfailing. The One who is what's left when everything else in life has failed and been moved and shaken. Today's invitation is the one that comes to us from the Almighty when the worst in life happens. And the psalmist says it this way, Be still and know that I am God. It's the invitation to just come and be. To come into the presence of one who is wholly adequate in the face of every human limitation and inadequacy. To bring our dry and desiccated, drought-parched souls to the one who is the source of all of life. The one who is that spring that makes happy the city of God, that ever flowing river. Be still and know that I am God. Just come and be. It isn't a Pollyanna invitation. The Psalms don't sugarcoat the human condition. Life is hard and especially hard for some people. 
The psalmist is aware that there are those who have been evicted from their homes, who are homeless, that there are evildoers in the world who will as soon chew you up as they would eat a piece of bread without a second thought. And yet the invitation comes. The Lord is a refuge for those whom life has treated like a punching bag. And not just a refuge. The psalmist says he is their refuge. A refuge to the poor, to those who are homeless, to those who need a shower, who need a meal. The invitation is there to all. Come and just be in the presence of the Almighty. Come and be with the one who made you, who loves you, who cares for what you are going through, who experiences the pain with you. Are you falling? The Lord upholds all who are falling. Are you suffering harsh treatment? The Lord is kind in all of His works. Are you bowed down? The Lord will lift you up. Do you have desires that you cannot seem to satisfy? The Lord satisfies the hungriest heart and the desires of every living soul. Can't get any justice? The Lord is righteous in all His ways. Haven't got any friends? The Lord is near to all who call on Him. He hears their cry and He saves them. Are you running on empty? Just come and be. Be still. And know that I am God. When evil pursues us, when trouble is hounding us. God is, the psalmist says, our hiding place. Literally, hundreds of psalms issue this invitation. Your word and your commandments are a shelter for me. It is as if we can, the psalmist says, climb up into the right hand of God and find our shelter there. Unlike the other things that we trust in life, whether it is friends or family or community leaders, nothing and no one is as trustworthy as the Lord. When trouble comes, the psalmist says, I take refuge in God. Psalm 7, Psalm 16, Psalm 31, Psalm 57, Psalm 71, Psalm 94, Psalm 141, 143, 144, 25. It goes on and on and on. I duck under the wings of the Almighty and I take refuge in the shadow that those wings cast over me. Again, we have to be careful we aren't talking about a get-out-of-jail-free card or some sort of magic trick with which to save ourselves when we get into a bind, a magic genie that we just rub the lamp and God will somehow show up and set everything right. The refuge we are talking about is not some automatic guarantee of personal, physical safety. You do remember the book of Amos. I mean, after all, we spent seven miserable weeks in the book of Amos. People had begun to take the statements about God's promised presence in the sanctuary for granted. Their pattern of life belied their claim that they were seeking God's shelter. Don't run off to Bethel, the prophet says. Don't head off to Jerusalem. Don't think that you can grab hold of the horns of that altar and be safe from the coming destruction. It does not work that way. Even in Jerusalem, the city of God, the holy habitation, the mountain of the Most High, where God Himself dwells, it was destroyed first by Babylonia and then by the Romans. In John 14, Jesus has just concluded what we call His Last Supper, that final meal with his disciples. He will be arrested, tortured, killed. And that is the context when the table has been cleared, where he turns and looks at his disciples and says to them, Do not let your 
hearts be troubled. Come, find peace in the Prince of Peace. Come and be with Jesus. It's a night for troubled hearts, but Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Just come and be. In my father's household, and here our translations fail us because they say house. In my father's household, oikia, not oikos, there are many, many places for you to just come and be. You have your own special place there in that family. You have a refuge, a fortress, an unmovable, unshakable, unfailing place, a home with God your Creator. That's what Jesus tells His disciples so that paradoxically you can just come and be with God. And if I go, he says, and prepare this place for you, I will send you my Spirit. And again, paradoxically, because I have gone away, I will be more present with you than I am sitting here today. Though I have gone away, when I return, I will take you to be where I am. And maybe you are as confused by those words of Jesus as his disciples were. Thomas looks at him and says, Lord, we've got no clue where you are going. So how can we possibly know the way? Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. Just come and be. All of you, just come. Come and be. Be still and know that I am God. Thomas, what you are so desperately seeking for, you have already found. Philip, the one you'll remember who got the ball rolling in John 1 by telling Nathaniel, hey, come and see. We found the one that Moses and the prophets were talking about. The one to whom the Greeks came when they wanted to see Jesus. That same Philip, he's as confused as Thomas. Philip says, Lord, just show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. That's enough for us. To which Jesus says, Have you been such a long time with me, and still you do not know me? I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. And in verse 20, he says, I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Just come and be. Thomas Akempis, in his book, The Imitation of Christ, reminds us that Jesus says the kingdom of God, that foundation you are looking for so desperately seeking is inside it's within you Christ will come to you Thomas says offering you his consolation if you prepare a fit dwelling for him in your heart whose beauty and glory wherein he takes delight are all from within his visits with the inward man are frequent. His communion is sweet and full of consolation. His peace is great. His intimacy, his friendship is wonderful. Therefore, faithful soul, prepare your heart for this bridegroom that he may come and dwell within you. That's the invitation, just come and be. Thomas says, when Jesus is near, all is well. And nothing seems as difficult. And when he is absent, all is hard. 
when Jesus does not speak within all other comfort that we might be searching for and looking for and even receive is as nothing at all. It is empty. But if he speaks only a word, every desire of our heart is filled. The comfort that we need is a great, great, overwhelming consolation. How dry and how hard you are without Jesus. How foolish and vain if you desire anything but Him. Is it not a greater loss than losing the whole world? For what without Jesus can the world give you? Life without Him is a relentless hell, but living with Him is a sweet paradise. If Jesus be with you, no enemy can harm you. He who finds Jesus finds a rare treasure, indeed a good above every good, whereas he who loves him loses him, loses more than the whole world. The man who lives without Jesus is the poorest of the poor, whereas no one is so rich as the man who lives in his grace. So respond to the invitation. Just come and be. Be with the one who is the source of all of life. Come and find your place in the great household of God. Just come and be. As with every sermon in this series, we have to be reminded again that the one who has received much from that person, much is also required. That's why all along the way, as Jesus is talking to his disciples that night, he is saying to them, the invitation is to come and find your place, but then the invitation is also to go out and be that place of refuge for others. To make it possible for them to encounter Jesus in you. When he says, the works that I do, you will do greater works. He's reminding them that they represent the refuge that God provides in the world. The shelter of the Almighty. The one to whom others will run in times of greatest need. We witnessed it this week. When the people of Waverly and Humphreys County cried out for help, some of you responded immediately. That's not to say that you are the unmovable, unshakable, unfailing God, but the God who is in you and with you is that refuge in a broken and inadequate and failing world. You are a sign of God's faithfulness to the world. And all you have to do is come and find your place in that family and in that refuge. Just come and be. And by faith, Christ is in you. Amen.